with you with another episode on uh, Blue Ocean Leadership. This is a very interesting topic. And uh, today we are going to cover this topic, its leadership aspects. And, and here with me is Mr. Faraz Mushtaba. He is a very good friend. He is the CEO of Denson Group and a Blue Ocean Strategist. How are you, Faraz? I'm fine. How are you? Good day. Fine, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for taking a time out from your busy schedule for this uh, discussion. Uh, so we are going to start now that please tell us what is Blue Ocean strategy? Yeah, sure. First of all, thanks for having me. Thanks for this uh, wonderful platform. Uh, we always uh, see your webinars and learn from it. Okay, Blue Ocean strategy is basically one of the most advanced. We call it the postmodern, uh, the leader in the postmodern strategies. Uh, it was uh, uh, created in 2005 when uh, two great uh, thinkers of the world today, uh, Dr. W. Chan Kim and Dr. Rene Maborn, who are uh, uh, at number three at World's Thinkers 50 uh, last year. Uh, one was from Harvard, one was for in from INSEAD, and they sat together and developed this strategy. Now, uh, the overall uh, time period of the development of the strategy was uh, from 1997 to 2005 so the, it was eight years of extensive research it was a global research and uh, very much expanded uh, of uh, the purpose of the research was to come up with such a strategy which uh, transforms the current landscape of the global uh, business commerce leadership and management uh, traditionally the strategies all the strategies we have ever read or seen or have been observing uh, over decades and uh, uh, like a couple of centuries have been uh, around competition. The competition has been the central word. Whatever uh, strategy, whichever strategy was developed, it was centered around how to fight best in competition. These two uh, uh, founders of Blue Ocean Strategies, uh, they came up with the idea of two metaphors. One is Red Ocean and the other is Blue Ocean. Uh, Red Ocean meant the traditional conventional industry boundaries within which uh, so many companies uh, have the same offer they are you know swimming in the sea of sameness and they offer similar services for example if there is a telecom company it is in the red ocean of telecom where there are um, five six seven or many players uh, offering the same service same thing so the purpose of every industry the purpose of the existence of every company was to get their chunk out of the limited resources and within the boundaries of the industry now uh, uh that that is a very grim situation because when you are in competition you it's competition that drives you you are not on the driving seat they drive you and what do you do you you pour everything that you have or you're gonna have or you can have you have to put everything in the well in the dark well of the competition your time your energy your resources your money capital your intellectual capabilities everything you are pouring and dumping in the red ocean of competition now with such a huge waste, uh, considering this huge waste, the, these two great uh, uh, leaders came up with the idea, why not, how to make the competition irrelevant. And the competition is made irrelevant only when you create the highest value, when you create the differentiation. But the dilemma was, the catch was when you create, uh, when you create a, a, a differentiation and you go for value addition and value innovation, it costs it costs too much the costs are very high especially the cost on research and development is very high so the central idea the pivotal force was how to make such an, a strategy which increases uh, your value innovation it takes you very much higher on the scale of the value innovation in the lowest cost uh, after this extensive research they finally did it now if uh, this is very important to tell that uh, this research included 3,000 researchers around the world. It took eight years to develop and now further 13 years in um, evolution of this strategy. Uh, both of the gent uh, uh, strategists, they studied uh, 150 greatest strategic moves uh, mm -hmm. from last 120 years from 30 different industries and learned what, uh, what were the best moves, what were the things to be adopted and what to do and what not to do. Both of, both of the aspects were covered and hence they came up uh, with the strategy, which is Blue Ocean strategy, where the strategy is, cons is consisting of 12 frameworks. When you apply those frameworks, basically what you are doing is to take yourself out of the red ocean and bringing yourself in the blue ocean where you are the only provider of some very unique differentiation and value innovation and you achieve that in lowest cost. 
Hence, you make the competition totally irrelevant and you break the industry boundaries and you break the mindset. This is what Blue okay, Ocean wonderful. wonderful. That's a great uh, introduction. So uh, I, I understand that Blue Ocean strategy has a big uh, canvas. And like you mentioned, there are 12 uh, pillars, I think, which uh, you apply. But uh, uh, could you tell us about that? What is uh, Blue Ocean leadership? What leaders has to you know adapt or, or follow to make it a success? Okay, it's all about system, right? Leaders uh, do not have to be on the edge of intuition or superstition or imagination. Uh, what they have to do is to do concrete step by step systematic process application, right? So anybody can become a blue ocean leadership. There's a fa very famous saying uh, when we uh, study in psychology, the nature versus nurture aspects, what is real, what is unreal. Same yeah. goes with the leadership that leader are born or leader are made right so uh, both aspects are true uh, there are pros there are cons there are the, the positive uh, advocacy signals and uh, evidences that leaders are born and same goes with, uh, with leaders are made what this strategy actually does which is the uh, single main uh, concrete differentiator between traditional strategies and this strategy is that anybody can adopt who is adopting the adopter is a leader Right. Because they do not have to create something. They do not have to uh, uh, bring in their psychology, their cognitive uh, aspects. Uh, they do not have to, uh, you know, uh, harness uh, the culture and uh, 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 culture and the talent and the human resource of the organization. What they have to do is to take one single executive decision, which is we are going to adopt the pollution strategy and they have to transform and engage uh, and uh, distribute the clarity of the concept to the whole organization. Uh, all they have to do is to go one by one systematically in the predefined 12 frameworks of Blue strategy. So, uh, frameworks are the same. Uh, Blue Ocean strategy is, is being developed using the 12 frameworks. Same goes with leadership. The leader who is uh, uh, adopting these frameworks, who is going through and taking his organization and employees through these 12 frameworks is a Blue Ocean leader. Okay. So, uh... So for any organization, what uh, you know the organization should do to actually implement this. I mean, is is there any step uh, steps needed to you know step one, step two? Can you briefly yes. tell us about that? Please? Yes, yes. First, uh, actually, in uh, anything that we do in business or leadership, anywhere, uh, in any time, uh, in the history or present or in future, everything depends on three things, which are mindset, skill set, and tool set. Right. Okay. So uh, what, uh, no matter how great your skills are, no matter how great the tools that you use, if you do not have the right mindset in place, you yeah. can't actually uh, 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 become a uh, bringer, bringer of a change. So mindset is important. Hence, blue ocean mindset is the first requirement before blue ocean strategy and before uh, blue ocean leadership. Now, that mindset can be adopted by anyone within the organization. So there are two ways to adopt blue ocean strategy and blue ocean leadership within uh, an organization. One is that the leader, the CEO, or the managing director or the chairman of the company takes an executive decision. He decides, yes, I have learned about blue ocean strategy. I am convinced on the great uh, wonders and benefits that the strategy has brought in uh, over the course of like now 15 years. And I am going to be part of that revolution within my organization. I'm bringing the change. This is executive decision. That is one way to do. But the other way to do, it goes from top to bottom. It goes also goes from bottom to top. It goes from right to left. And it also goes from left to right. Anyone within any organization can have the blue ocean mindset. There is no compliance. There is no regulation. No, uh, 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 nothing can stop anyone. Uh, from thinking and adopting the ocean strategy. For example, one person is sitting, uh, is at the head of a department. He can become the leader and apply and implement pollution strategy within the department. Uh, come to a, a scale, which is a desk. One, whoever is working on a desk, he can adopt pollution strategy. The results are so quick and evident and concrete and visible that the next desk is inspired. And then the next desk and the next desk and the, then the next department and then the whole country the whole culture of the organization which witnesses the greatness and application and the results and fruits of the strategy they will start adopting so this is a two-way process either either of the two ways either executive takes the decision which makes the thing very easier he thinks yes i'm going to adopt this strategy he tells now
and within the 12 frameworks they are way uh, for this announcement and expectation setting from the employees so very easily the uh, these 12 tools harness that challenge as well the challenge of the change the challenge to curb the rigidity within the organization the second way as i said is anyone can adopt anyone okay. so can become the uh, ambassador of change within the organization okay so if we can uh, let's say if we can uh, come up with two three main characteristics of the uh, blue ocean leaders uh, we can say that they are uh, decision makers i mean there's a quick decision making needed and and uh, the other one is that they, they, they need to be change champion because whenever you take decisions there is a, a you know a lot of change which is which is coming up so need to be you know they should embrace and develop the change uh, management culture within the organization right definitely, definitely. and you mentioned the mindset so there 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 has to have a, a forward looking mindset that gung ho attitude in the leader that because you need to come out of your comfort zone right because definitely. if you are implementing any change you you have to come out of your comfort zone it's not that easy right so right. these, apparently think, apparently it looks like that it's not yeah. easy but when you see the results and when you see uh, your portion of the hard work that you're going to adopt to achieve the similar results within your organization, you will see that things are very easy. First, the founders of the strategy, they have simplified everything up to that extent that anyone can adopt, anyone, no matter what background, qualification, experience or position one has, they can go and adopt. All it requires is to imp start implementing and going through th those 12 frameworks and that's all, right? One way. Yeah. The other way is that uh how to break the first barrier which is the first block of the mindset uh the result shows that as you say that picture says uh, the, much more than uh, the words and the videos itself uh, shows more than the pictures right so the results are so visible for example if i say uh, those companies uh, who initially dared dared to adopt blue strategy they had the rigidity they had the lack of mindset but when they decided uh they changed the world. The wor world, uh, world witnessed first trillion dollar company in the history, which is Apple. Apple was is the first company in human history which has touched the one trillion market value mark. Right? How does it happen? They adopted the blue ocean strategy. The whole I series of Apple is blue ocean, followed by Amazon. Amazon.com is going to be the uh, world's second ever company going to be the trillion dollar company. If I come to the leaders, imagine Jeff Bezos. Uh, since our childhood, we have been uh, uh, hearing and listening about Bill Gates, the richest man of the world. But Bill Gates today um, stands at 95 billion US dollars. He hasn't crossed 100 billion dollars. But Jeff Bezos, look at his wealth now. The world's, world's first centi-billionaire, 137 billion US dollars is worth this, right? How? Because he adopted Blue Ocean strategy for the Amazon.com. He adopted Blue Ocean leadership for himself, and the results are evident. This is one way to look at how they did it. Uh, what are the common parameters among greatest world's greatest companies uh, who are transforming? For example, I am in Pakistan. Pakistan's largest company is OGDCL, formed in 1967, and uh, 15,000 employees they have. Uh, the assets, the exploration sites, the rigs, uh, uh, ENP, all over the country. Such a massive organization. The revenue is annual revenue is 4.5 billion US dollars. Can you now compare it with Uber? Uber adopted Blue Ocean strategy. It's a small app. Uh, just for five years uh, in, pro in pro progress, Uber is $6.5 billion and the market cap is $72 billion US dollars. So wow. these are the differentiators, differentiators that when are so visible that one when one leader sees, he says, what did they do that I should do? So they have to adopt Blue Ocean strategy. Uh, I must quote uh, Rene Maborn, the co-founder of the Blue Ocean strategy. She said that when we meet and ask leaders, uh, that what is uh, what is the right way to create or to compete they say compete uh, sorry create when i ask them uh, should you uh, uh, create or compete they say we should create are you creating or competing they say we are competing right? so so those are the barriers that you need to break you have to first decide yes i have to create not compete one and if you uh, create here is the plate here is the menu here is the five Start course 12 frameworks that's all start adopting it learn from us or ask us to develop it for you or we teach you or you learn it either way go for it it's a very easy solution you don't need to worry about the boundaries of the industries the customers that uh, you have to tap uh, the demand that you have to meet no you have to capture and create the new demand
you do not have to beat the competition you have to make the competition irrelevant you have to break the industry boundaries okay great so you mentioned a couple of companies names actually my uh, later part of this discussion is about this disruption because uh disruption is like uh, you know sweeping the markets and it's actually uh close a lot of businesses and companies and they are out of market so i'll cover this in the later but before i uh, go into that uh, part i would like to know you, I'm, I'm actually quoting uh, one of the uh, you know from one of the h bar article uh, on uh, blue ocean and it's saying that blue ocean leadership uh, achieves a transformation with less time and effort because yes. leaders are not trying to alter who they are so what exactly yes. leaders do in uh, be uh, you know blue ocean transformation initiatives because there has to have certain traits other than we discussed could you please uh, you know explain some some more that what leaders should you know focus yeah right uh, so uh, you have to see in terms then you have to compare side by side what is blue ocean strategy what is blue, uh, red ocean strategy what traditionally has been done in leadership and what blue ocean leadership does so i will compare right like, three points side by side uh, which will make the things very clear in traditional leadership within the organizations the leadership was all about what the leader is but in blueshell strategy it's about what the leader does second point in traditional leadership the leaders needed to match with the organization but uh, in blue ocean uh, leadership leaders need to match with market reality right in two ways first they match with the market reality second they are able to change the market reality uh, third they are able to uh, uh, to transform the markets and economies right they are the uh, 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 ambassadors of change they are the creators of the change they are not only the followers of the change number third point that uh, leadership uh, is supposedly for the top level only in traditional leadership but uh, in, in the systematic frameworks of blue ocean strategy the blue ocean leadership goes across all the management levels right these are the three important things that uh, that are done but these are not theory uh, only any statements there are actually predefined frameworks and the frameworks are very same if you see uh, the 12 frameworks of blue ocean strategy which is actually the decision job of the ceo and the implementation job of the chief strategy officer and uh, the, the collaborative job of the whole organization that they are going to adopt the blue ocean strategy they are going to uh, go through the 12 frameworks in those 12 frameworks everything is covered everything imaginable by any departmental head, any world leader, any thinker, any change, change ambassador within the organization or any implementer in the, within the organization, anything that he can think comes within the frameworks, within the 12 frameworks, every single thing, all the risks, all the implementation hurdles, all the things that are needed to be created to go beyond the existing industry, the marketing side, the customers, the pricing, the uh, customer experience and buyer utility and the leadership as well the two very important frameworks out of those 12 frameworks are the one tipping point leadership and the fair process these two points already covered oh, oh, oh how the blue ocean strategy will work this was blue ocean strategy having two main components of the leadership then came the blue ocean leadership first you decided and then how to implement that leadership now those 12 uh, those uh, two frameworks are expanded and there are subsets of the applications and execution models which they have to adopt all they have to do is to sit on the driving seat right everything is there the steering is there fuel is there car with the very super engine is there the road is clear and all they have to is to uh, you know switch the uh, ignition everything okay. is placed okay wonderful so is there any timeline to actually implement this whole uh, you know process because I, I see from uh, the discussion then it requires uh, a lot of effort from you know the leaders uh, themselves which are uh, you know heading this the any any uh, department and any company mm -hmm. the, the culture of transformation is is very critical to actually implement these because you need to hire and you need to retain uh, and attract those uh, kind of you know the people who can be part of this whole uh, initiative so is there any timeline for this like it can be achieved in uh, one year two year or it depends on the, on the kind of market you are in uh, probably right a minimum we say that results can be very visible within one quarter right within three months right if you uh, apply it uh, in accordance with the prescribed things uh, it total depends time total depends one 
on the rigidity or the openness and flexibility of the leader, right? How quickly they transform or uh, uh, the magnitude of the industry uh, or the economy, the challenges within the economies like recession uh, or dollar and oil prices uh, coming up and down. Uh, it depends on so many things. Let me quote an example. For example, uh, when the pollution strategy after in corporate sector, when it was applied to government sector uh, in Malaysia, you know, it took three years of back to back negotiations, the back and forth visits from USA to Kuala Lumpur by the co-founders and the team of global pollution strategy. It took Malaysia uh, three years to make a final decision that, yes, we are going to adopt pollution strategy at the national level as a national development plan. But after three years, when uh, and they adopted in uh, 2009, Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi uh, adopted pollution strategy in 2009. It was an executive decision. It started from 2006 adopted in 2009 and look at the results in 2014 first five years impl impl implementation there were there was 60 percent increase in gross national income two million new jobs created in the public sector 58 percent decrease in the implementation of the government planning costs and 85 uh, government impl uh, plans implementation cost and the planning cost reduced by 85 percent and 35 percent reduction in the annual crime rate right world bank says that this is the biggest transformation uh, uh, in the economic development by any company, which was not done by economists, but by strategists. Imagine this was, this took three years and five years of application and results. But when the results were there, you know how many countries immediately adopted pollution strategy? 24. 24 really? companies did not, did not wait for that three year long haul. They saw the results. They said, yes, we, are, we also want to do. At Singapore, Thailand, Estonia, two of American states, European Union itself overall adopted pollution strategy. Look at the example of Estonia. Just last December, three months back in Abu Dhabi, there was World Government Summit and the Prime Minister of Estonia came and uh, uh, gave a speech. And she said how they transformed uh, uh, Estonia. Now imagine uh, the thing that uh, the magnitude that I was talking about. Uh, we talked to Oil and Gas Development Corporation, Pakistan, they are 15,000 employees organization. But look at the population of Estonia. It's a whole country. Every single citizen got digitized. It, the company is known as e-Estonia as well, the world's most digital country. Every citizen uh, has been taken within the framework of the pollution strategy. They adopted pollution strategy for the digitization and e -citizen, citizenship of the country. They made decision like this on the observation and uh, uh, the results seen from Malaysia and Singapore did it. So Malaysia did it. Uh, sorry, Thailand also adopted regional strategy. They were quick decisions. So it all depends how flexible you are uh, to accept the realities. Okay. So so the, the roadmap is like it, it, it evolves and it, it depends on the situation and the kind of business you are in because for private it, it will be different and for public sector it will be different because of the scale. Uh, well, well depend, depend, depend. Uh, let me uh, quote another example of uh, Petrobras versus Petronas. They are not in competition. They are both similar state level organizations, oil and gas front flagship organizations of Brazil and Malaysia. But look at the difference. Uh, uh, it took too much time, like two decades for uh, Petrobras, Brazil's national petroleum company to uh, adopt uh, uh, the pollution strategy. And when they adopted, they, they're uh, their vision was too big. They want to bring uh, uh, the global changes. They want to make some world records. Like right? mm -hmm. so, they were exploring the oil, but they decided that they have to, um, you know, reduce the reliance on fuel, on um, the carbon fuels. So they uh, adopted pollution strategy for the cost reduction. They reduced their cost so much. They had a, a pool of money to invest on R and D, which they invested in agriculture, and they they developed the new technologies for uh, uh, cultivating sugar cane. They produced. So imagine Petrobras produced so much sugar cane and derived ethanol from sugar cane, uh, and converted all the cars and vehicles in the country uh, on ethanol instead of petrol, and hence there was a six percent decrease in the carbon emission the greatest transformation uh, and the results in the green economies and then they had so much money saved from pollution strategies uh, cost reduction models to explore their core business which was oil exploration and instead of polluting the land they stopped it uh, they adopt uh, they started exploring the sea and they created the world record in the deepest sea drilling which is 6900 meters uh, in the south atlantic so it took time. It, it They had the larger vision. They had the larger magnitude as well. Their uh, acceptance to change was very huge. 
uh, when, when we see the scales. Uh, and then they reached now, uh, they're about to reach $100 billion in revenue. In comparison, Petronas did only simple thing. Petronas is also national uh, oil company of Malaysia. What they did, they thought that uh, our biggest challenge is cost. We don't compete. We don't want to compete with Royal Dutch Shell and ExxonMobil and other giants uh, and BP. What we need to do is to control our cost and manage our workflow and things are done. So they, they, they adopted Blue strategy, which told them the Blue strategy frameworks came up with the idea of a coral program, which is called a cost reduction alliance. And they reduced so much costs and applied uh, and invested that saved money in innovation and technologies, uh, smart innovation and technologies within the organization that it reached the 100 billion mark uh, quicker than uh, uh, Petrona, Petrobras. So Petro, Petrobras is, I think uh, today it is a 98 billion, but Petronas is a hundred billion dollar organization. Okay. So I mean, after sharing all these wonderful examples, uh, what do you think the acceptance of this strategy, this, this, this framework is increasing in this part of the world, especially in the Middle East and the Asia, or it's more towards the European or American side? What, what right. do you see? What, what is your analysis? Of everywhere in the last 15 years we have seen that from every industry be it a conglomerate level be it a startup level be it sme level everybody when they google and uh, google the results that how their imaginative competitor is doing how they transformed the world they made uh, they made they, how they became billion dollar organizations they came to the keyword on the google that they, uh, these organizations adopted blue strategy then they start uh, 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 learning about it how they can do it uh, for example, uh, if you are a management consultant, you have a competition uh, on the same floor of your office building and the uh, management consulting company. Uh, you do, do Both of you do not have to compete. You do not have to wipe out each other. But you adopt pollution strategy. Your skills, your minds different than your competition, no matter how uh, it, no, no matter if he is in the same uh, industry. Every organization is different. So your pollution will be different than him. We, you will not compete with each other. You will not outwipe each other. Uh, and nothing can stop you, not even regulations of the governments. In, you talked about UAE. You see, you remember, and we both worked in UAE for so long. Uh, there is an organization, Road and Transport Authority, RTA. We all know about it. right? They have been managing taxis in UAE. It's been like for more than 40 years that this huge industry, taxi industry, is managed and regulated by Road and Transport Authority. But what happened? Nobody could stop the technology. When Kareem and Uber came, right, the UAE's economy was totally dependent on uh, foreign visitors, right? Visitors coming from Africa and Europe and America and Canada and Southeast Asia. They were the users of Uber, right? They wanted that facility uh, in the uh, tourist destination as well, be it Kuala Lumpur, Thailand or Dubai. When they arrive, they look for Uber and Kareem, right? So they do not go for RTS traditional taxis. What happened? You have seen the change. Government had to allow and regulate um uh, uh those taxis and the whole system of rta collapsed those uh, blue uh, 1000 blue roof taxis 1000 green uh, had uh, green headed taxis uh, yellow headed taxis where are they now we can't see them we don't see them anymore in dubai things changed government regulations 40 year of established institutions got hampered and the technology uh, uh, came in now when the technology comes in it doesn't wipe out the industries it creates new industries now uber is a totally new industry. It is a blue ocean product. Uber is based on a total new industry, which was, which is Google Maps, the GPS navigation system. Again, that is blue ocean strategy. So uh, one blue ocean creates another blue ocean, and there is a series of blue oceans. Nobody can get rid of it. If you have okay. to survive, you have to adopt blue ocean strategy one way of one way or other. Yeah, very very interesting point, and and I think uh, this brings me to my last uh, point in this discussion, which. I would like to quote uh, the most recent article from MIT Soil Management Review, and I'll just unquote that they, they say and they have written there that we call it non-disruptive creation, which offers a new way of thinking about what's possible. It highlights the immense potential for creating new markets where none existed before. Okay, and then further they say that most companies remain stuck in the mindset that in order to create, you must disrupt or destroy. The time has come to fully embrace the idea that you can create without destroying. Non-disruptive creation breaks the existing frame on innovation and growth and allows for a much broader view of how they are generated. 
Now the question comes that how does it relate to the current market conditions where mostly disruption has taken over in many industries and uh, they are killing the small and medium sized businesses and companies. So how how do you I mean, we, as a blue ocean strategist, you say that it uh, I mean, uh, how they are non destructive in, in, in nature, I right. think uh, if you consider Airbnb, I mean, Airbnb has disrupted the whole uh, hotel and tourism market in in the world because of introducing this this concept and i think they they also fall into the category of blue ocean because they created a, they are. a blue they are. yeah there's a whole case That's study deep. on when you go to blue ocean strategy.com you will see a, uh, the blue ocean strategy of airbnb you can read the whole case study see no this is one way of looking at the things it does not uh, it disrupts no 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 doubt but it also gives you a lesson to adapt right uh, you, do, you don't get yourself out competed by blue ocean strategy or by any other technological transformation or by any other thing you have to keep on changing this is a big lesson airbnb on one hand if it uh, apparently destroyed the hospitality industry uh, look at the another example of citizen m uh, another low cost hoteling industry which emerged from uk and they created blue ocean and citizen uh, m is now becoming the world standard of for tourists when they have to enjoy the experience of hospitality, they do not go for Marriott's and um, Ritz Carlton's and five stars and three stars and four stars. This is a totally new category that Citizen M created. Similarly, uh, Petrobras did not kill Petronas. Petronas did not kill BP. These three organizations adopted Russian strategy within uh, uh, within the oil and gas industry. Right? They did not destroy each other, and the new players are emerging. Uh, the newcomers like Uber. Now, uh, as uh, I said ag again, uh, I will say again, Pakistan's, my country's largest company, OGDCL, is it competing with Uber? Yes, it is. If you see that uh, in terms of revenues, 4.5 billion in like 50 years and uh, 6.5 billion in five years, right? So the progress is there, the uh, innovation and the acceptance to change and uh, uh, go with the flow, positive flow of the disruption is very visible. They do not outcompete each other in any way. But uh, the Uber created a new market. Uh, I must say, has Apple out competed Samsung? No. Samsung does not have, both are technology companies, both had the competition in Apple iPhone and Samsung's Galaxy series, right? But Apple came up with different ideas. Samsung did not adopt the evolution strategy. And yet Samsung, who has all the potential, is not a $1 trillion, $3 trillion company. But Apple did. Apple created iSeries. And the whole iSeries is not a competition to Samsung. Right? Same way, um, uh, if you think of uh, uh, airplanes within one industry of aviation, there are so many uh, uh, aviation companies which adopted evolution strategy. They, they created something different within their industry or they broke the uh, boundaries of the industry. Uh, for example, Southwest Air, uh, Airlines and um, uh, Air Asia in Malaysia and Ryanair. And uh, uh, there are a couple of more players which adopted evolution strategy. They do not compete each other, each other, no matter they are in aviation industry. There are newcomers, there are old giants. Still, they are enjoying and going with a positive pace of disruption. OK, wonderful. So it means that the companies, once they achieve uh, blue ocean, they have to reinvent and, uh, you know, keep innovating themselves because there keep are innovating. cases. Yeah. So keep there innovating. are cases in, in history. You mentioned a couple of uh, telecom companies. Nokia and Blackberry is one of them. You see, they created blue ocean, but then they died out because of a uh, compl uh, complacent mindset and they stopped innovating. So it means that the, pe the companies who are in blue ocean, they should you know, see uh, and look ahead and, and keep innovating and developing right. that culture and people and then the mindset, tool set, skill set, which you mentioned, so that the, the this ecosystem should be live, uh, right? Uh, very right. It has it has to be dynamic, right? It, it has to be very dynamic uh, and continuous. See, Nokia did not adopt blue ocean strategy. No, Nokia is not a case example of blue ocean strategy, but uh, BlackBerry is. BlackBerry was among the first players who adopted blue ocean strategy. They went for value innovation in the in, access to internet on the go for the leaders, for the elite, for the CEC class executives who, ha who they, there was a need for them to have the access to their uh, emails and internet on the go while traveling. So BBM uh, was the solution. They came up with that idea for uh, the first five years, what they earned it so visible. 
all the red ocean giants were there it was motorola and uh, nokia and sony ericsson and apple and so many big companies were there but blackberry came and uh, their cumulative revenue for five, five, first five years was uh, their overall revenue for, for five, five, first five years was larger than the cumulative mm -hmm. revenue of the all the red ocean giants right that was amazing but that was the first lesson for uh, us as, as well that blue oceans expire as well it's very very it's very hard to copy and mimic uh, the blue ocean idea but it expires as well so blue uh, uh, blackberries blue ocean ex expired and the lessons were, were lessons were learned and adopted by steve jobs in apple he came up with the i series one blue ocean after another right there was so much after blue ocean strategy that they adopted they continuously adopted uh, blue ocean strategy now uh, a blackberry is coming up once again uh, and uh, i presume that it is going to be world's largest iot company right they are innovating in a, in, a, in, a, in another direction now uh, uh, very importantly, I must quote uh, 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 an uh, answer to your previous question once again, uh, that do organizations outcompete each other? No, they go with diversification and differentiation and value innovation. Example is Amazon.com. When Amazon.com came, it was just an online bookseller and it, it was competing whom? Barnes & Noble, right? Barnes & Noble had the physical uh, warehouses and the shops and his bookstores and, and Amazon wanted to, yeah, and Amazon wanted to compete with uh, Barnes & Noble. But what uh, for first eight years, Amazon did not earn any profit. But you see what happened. What is Amazon today? They adopted version strategy. They went for differentiation and value innovation and the change. And they cre created uh, the disruption. They became the creator of the disruption in in the book book online book selling industry. No, they created a new industry. Now you can you cannot even define what Amazon.com is. Amazon.com has its own airline. They have it. Uh, it has its own robots. It has its own drones. It, uh, it is selling everything online, but is uh, Amazon.com an online industry? No, you cannot even name the uh, industry uh, of which Amazon.com is leader. You know, what is the biggest, uh, biggest revenue of Amazon comes from where? It's cloud services. Imagine the revenue from cloud services of Amazon, Amazon.com is more than the cumulative revenue of IBM and Google. Imagine Amazon was not a competitor to Microsoft or Apple or uh, Dell. But imagine and Cisco, but uh, their rev main revenue is coming from uh, uh, cloud services. Okay. How many people you go to Amazon.com? Ev everyone who has ever bought books from Amazon.com, like you do a lot, I know. Uh, <laughs> can we imagine that it's basically a cloud company? They are offering cloud storage and services. No, and now Amazon is uh, making its rockets, just like uh, Elon Musk. Right, Jeff Bezos. If you uh, read his interviews for the, uh, in the last one year, he's totally focused on creating the low-cost rockets, reusable rockets, just like uh, Falcon. Venture, and venture into space and a different uh, industry. Well, uh, exactly. thank you so much, uh, Faraz. I think it's a wonderful discussion, and uh, I feel like we we should keep discussing, but but uh, the time is limited. So thank you so much uh, for your, uh, your time and a wonderful discussion. And I hope the audience will like a very insightful discussion. And we're going to understand what Blue Ocean and uh, what to implement. And uh, hope to see you again with a, with a different topic on, on leadership. Thank you so much. And have a very good day. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for having Goodbye. me. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Goodbye.